What's up, Prize Fight fans? I'm Brian Tong, and the battle for streaming box supremacy never stops. It's a prize fight punch out between the new kid on the block, Amazon's Fire TV, and the reigning champ, the Roku 3. Our judges for this fight are executive editor John Bad to the Bone Falcone, senior associate editor Matthew Big Show Muscoviak, and myself, Can't Go Wrong Tom. We'll take each round score and average them out to the nearest tenth of a point. The final prize fight score will be an average of all rounds using the same system. Let's get this started. Round one is designed. Amazon's first entry has a slim and square matte black profile that reminds you of an optical drive and it will fit right in with your TV setup. The Roku 3 brings its black glossy finish and a smaller package with thicker curves, just the way I like it, their classic fabric tag, and a solid weight. Now the Fire TV's remote is really one of the best out of the gates with the right size and feel compared to Roku's bulkier design. These are still just two black boxes, but we're giving the Fire TV the edge with a 4.3 and Roku gets a 4. Next round is user interface and navigation. The Fire TV does things right and wrong here. It's really one of the snappiest UIs and videos play almost instantly, but its biggest drawback is that the content feels jumbled and unorganized. You have a watch list for videos, but you can't pin apps and services to specific locations for favorites at the moment. Its focus is on Amazon Prime content, but there still isn't a place just for Prime content. And then try to watch a series like 24. It shows you pricing for episodes, but you'll have to make a few extra moves to find out that Prime members can watch it for free. No bueno. Now we know that these issues will be resolved over time, but it's still frustrating. Now its voice search accuracy is really stellar. It's the first time for a streaming box and I'm impressed with how well it works. Fast and the Furious. But it doesn't search deep enough with other services and its content organization needs to be better. The Roku 3's interface and content is just organized better, plain and simple. There's plenty of customization to personalize the entire layout of your channels. I still think that the UI needs a fresh coat of paint, especially with some apps still retaining the horizontal scroll look and feel. But let's not forget its killer universal search that pulls from Roku's multiple content sources and tells you what service and the price it will cost across multiple apps. That's a killer feature. The Roku 3 gets a 4.7 and Fire TV gets a 3.3. So after averaging two rounds, Roku leads. Round three is featured. Both of these $99 boxes bring HDMI 1080p video support, dual band Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. The Roku brings a micro SD card slot for additional storage and a USB port to connect external drives. The Fire TV's USB port isn't used for anything yet. It adds an optical audio output, but its quad-core processor and two gigs of RAM make a difference in performance that you could feel. Now the Roku's remote with a headphone jack for private listening is still a favorite feature no one can touch, but the Fire TV's remote has voice search capability that is really a joy to use. Brian Tong. And I promise you, I had nothing to do with that movie. Now, if you're in the Kindle ecosystem, you can use a Kindle Fire HDX as a second screen for their awesome X-ray feature that delivers more content and info during a movie. And if you're watching a movie on your HDX, you can just fling it to your Fire TV. Both remotes can act as controllers for some basic games, but if you're talking about gaming, the Fire TV has an option for a $40 wireless game controller, and the power of this machine allows you to play real games for the first time on a streaming box that is not a dedicated gaming console. Both boxes let you stream your personal photos or videos, but having to upload to Amazon's cloud drive is an extra step. Amazon brings even more to the table with free time that limits the content kids can watch and is a big deal for families, but Slingbox users can use a Roku to watch their Slingbox from home on another TV, and this is really a killer feature. Roku is once an untouchable in this round, but the Fire TV brings things we have never seen in this space. Amazon gets a perfect 5, and Roku gets a 4.3. The final round that decides it all is content. The Fire TV brings almost every major service you can think of on launch, like Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. But its biggest omission is HBO Go, which is coming later, so you won't be able to share your HBO subscription just yet, and Time Warner customers are also left out for now. 
It has music covered with Pandora and iHeartRadio, and I won't dock it for its lack of my favorite CNET app. Amazon does get a nod for its gaming content, and it's only going to get better, but nothing can compete with the over 1,000 plus channels of content on Roku. That includes HBO Go and Time Warner. Now, Roku has pretty much everything covered from movies to music to sports and news, including Amazon Prime, and it's still the king of content right now. It's pretty clear, Roku takes this round with a perfect five, and Amazon gets a four. So let's average out all four rounds, and both sides claim two rounds of their own, but it's the Roku 3 that takes this battle 4.5 to 4.2 and is your prize fight winner. Amazon's Fire TV is an impressive entry that will only get better, and if you live in the Amazon ecosystem, this is the stream box for you. But until then, Roku's content library still reigns supreme. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another prize fight. Think you got me?